I don't know what we call it. When I was in aviation, we called these pancakes because they uh, look nothing like a pancake, but they operate nothing like a pancake too, so. This is uh, my airline, I got my reel. Uh, that big hose is my oil recovery um, system. So I got a pump here. Uh, this pump is uh, just a suction pump with the four-way valve, so it reverses the flow. I just got on a little quick connect because I you know, don't have a lot of space to keep everything hooked up all the time. I can roll the hose up and then connect it when I need it. And the tank for that, actually, we kind of skipped over that, but that big white thing right beside my big floor jack is uh, the tank for the uh, oil recovery system. So that fits about uh, 60 gallons, I think it was. So like a, a full 55 gallon drum will fit in there with a little room to spare. And then, you know, I try not to keep it too full because it's a lot of weight. And uh, yeah, once in a while I just, you know, I got my waste uh, storage tanks over there. So I just come and dump it or, you know, some sometimes customers have, uh, what do you call it, waste oil furnaces. So they just let me dump there for free too. So yeah some blocking, wheel chocks. All this is like my small lifting hardware, uh, little shackles, small lifting, tooling, that kind of stuff. Um, I keep some plastic bags, big ones, heavy duty ones for, um, I'll just, you know, if I got a big job, a big service, I'll throw a lot of my garbage in there, like especially the really oily stuff. Uh, I'm really big on keeping the site clean, that kind of stuff. I, uh, I like to, you know, you don't wanna look professional. Some of these sites, they're really, really picky on, you know, oil spills and that kind of thing. So sometimes you can just cut those bags open, lay them out and, you know, or put a tarp down or something like that. And a lot of times it's just presentation showing that you're making the effort too. So yeah, no, it's uh, something to keep on me. Um, I actually used to use them with garbage cans. Sometimes you put a garbage can out and stick the bag inside the garbage can and then you can dump like a whole hydraulic tank in there and reuse it because it's clean in the bag and it keeps it kind of sealed. You can tie the bag off after with some zip ties. You know, if you're draining a tank and you want to refill it, because you don't always waste all the oil you drain out, you want to reuse it. Oil's expensive. Um, yeah, uh, this is all my uh, specialty tooling, testers. Um, I try to label most stuff so I know what it is, because I don't have to waste time looking through a bunch of boxes. If I don't know what it, you know, I pretty much know what all these things do and what, I, what they are. I mean, I'd hope so, it is my truck. You know, I got like ball joint press, uh, compression tester, a bearing driver, snap ring pliers. Yeah, uh, what are these? Tap and die set or the uh, re-threader set. A couple of sets of pullers, some random bits, a rad tester, like a coolant pressure tester, a boroscope camera, like, uh, it's like a little camera with a big long snaky end on it so I can see into places where I can't fit my eyeballs. Uh, my torque multiplier I was talking about earlier, that guy. Um, my vac, I was talking about this earlier. This is kind of a cool thing when you're just kind of, you know, you, you, a lot of guys make their own or you can buy, you know, the, uh, the cat one and stuff. This is just an old Mighty Vac or whatever it was. Uh, and you make a bunch of adapters and stuff for different tanks. Uh, but this is super handy for putting a vacuum on a hydraulic tank or a fuel tank or something. It's kind of a, I think it's a, a, an essential tool for a lot of mechanics. Maybe some guys don't like them, but whatever. Tool bag, when I gotta load up some tools, I actually usually keep that in the other drawer with all my sockets and stuff. More consumable, like grinding bits, that kind of stuff, flappy wheels. Uh, cutty boys in the back. I got an O-ring kit in here because I sometimes you just have a quick O-ring to swap out. So I always keep an O-ring kit on this side. This is a ORF kit. And yeah, sometimes you just get to a machine and you got a quick, uh, you know, 10 minute fix. You could throw an O-ring in it and be done. So I can just come to one side of the truck, grab that and go. All my hydraulic tooling, like pressure testers, uh, hoses, that kind of stuff, gauges, um, yeah. You know, checking pressures, setting things up. I don't have a flow meter yet. Uh, it's one of the next things I plan to get um, for setting up attachments and stuff like that. Uh, zip ties. I always got lots of zip ties. You use them a lot, you know? So it's nice to keep uh, harnesses, hoses, stuff like that organized when you go in and you take things apart and, and you know, you reinstall your component, whatever you're doing, you come back out, you got to zip tie everything back in place where it was. You know, that's, I come across a lot of repairs from 
you know, other guys maybe have been in it, you know, a few other guys have been into that machine and there's hoses dangling where they aren't supposed to be and harnesses and, you know, like, you think like, oh, well, I can't quite reach a zip tie on that or that's too hard to put that clamp back, that P-clamp on that harness, you know, it was too greasy and gooey in there. I don't want to put my hand in there, whatever the reason was. Well, that kind of stuff, you know, it makes more work for us, I guess, if that's what you're going for. But, uh, you know, I like to eliminate customer downtime. So I try to put everything back how it's supposed to be, zip tie stuff. If anything, do it better than, than factory, do it better than it was before. There's no, no excuses kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, more Rolox, flappy wheels, that kind of stuff. Rolox, scotch Bright. Uh, I think it's got the same in here. Yeah, just scotch bright random stuff. Emery cloth, that kind of thing. Yeah, now we're getting, uh, this is my tool cabinets. I'll open this one up too at the same time. But, uh, the drawer packs are just full of all the stuff that doesn't fit in cases or doesn't have its own case. You know, you got lots of random stuff. Uh, this side's kind of more random things, I guess. I don't know, because my primary box is this one. You know, I mostly work out of this and then things like my you know, my little map gas torch and these little butt plug things, these are super handy. Uh, um, these are hydraulic plugs. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what to call it, man. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, these, you know, like uh, all this random stuff, my caution tape, you know, that kind of thing. It's just random stuff that doesn't really have a home otherwise. Uh, some tap die extractors. Uh, gasket punches, Allen sockets, standard, metric, uh, die grinders, and then more random stuff. Actually, this is cool. I like to keep these little stupid def straws because they fit coolant jugs and they fit other like, like your washer fluid or coolant, not that you care if you spill washer fluid, but like coolant. Um, you can keep a clean one and then, you know, when you're going and doing a bunch of coolant or something like that, you can just throw this on and it kind of keeps this, the, the spill down if you're in an awkward spot. Some of the reservoirs are in really crappy spots maybe, you know. Uh, I got all my, my gooey stuff and my uh, cleaning stuff, brake clean, degreasers. Uh, there's some other random stuff in here like uh, paint and rapid tap and seal there's sealants, all that, you know. This is kind of the gooey area though, I guess. There's another tape measure. My drill bits I keep up here. You know, it's, it's not like there's a huge rhyme or reason to a lot of my organization, I guess, because the drill bits don't really belong with cleaning supplies, but they fit there. They fit there good. Uh, there's colored zip ties in here, a bunch of them. I used to use that, uh, that phone cable, the big uh, bundles of it comes with like a million different colors. It's super handy for doing like hydraulic valve banks and wiring harnesses when you got to mark a lot of wires and a lot of hoses. It's harder to find. I still have a bunch at home, but I honestly just started using the zip ties because they're so easy to just throw on. They don't come off as easy, I find too. Uh, sometimes you lose a mark and then you're, you're boned. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I got a bunch of big zip ties and little ones that are all different colors there for marking stuff. Um, you always want to, my, my thing is always marking it because you never know if, like, I might not be putting it back maybe because whatever, another guy comes out to it to finish the job up or I send somebody else out to it. Uh, so you mark everything, even if, you know, you know where everything goes and you've memorized it a hundred times or whatever. I like to mark it because you never know. The next guy coming in might not have any clue what he's looking at, right? So you mark it, you know. Uh, this is uh, kind of my main toolbox. So I keep all, I try to kind of keep things in, uh, I don't know how to, how to put it. Efficiencies, be, be efficient. Keep all the stuff you use the most in, in certain areas so that you're, you know, quick to grab it, you know, like I got all my impact stuff in here, you know, uh, my, my Milwaukee stuff or my, my, my red tools that everybody loves. All the mechanics love these. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I got the red stuff. Oh, I can hook you up. Um, yeah. These are a game changer, actually. Uh, I mean, there's preference, some guys like certain colors, whatever, you know, certain brands, but uh, I found this stuff's been really good. The die grinder, this thing's a game changer. All my other die grinders just sit in there and rust away because this thing, I love this. Now I don't have to fire the truck up, the compressor up just to go and clean something or buff something. Same with like the, uh, the cordless grinders, like super handy in the field, you know. 
you don't have to fire up your welder. You don't have to run a cord out. You just throw a battery on it and you know, it's, uh, it's dead. But you know, you throw a battery on it, you go. Like, yeah, it reminds me to keep some batteries charged. I have tons of batteries. I always keep some charged. I always keep some on the charger because I hate running out of battery. Yeah, I hate not having, you know, something to do the job and not being prepared. So I got tons of batteries and there's always something charged. So when I come across one like that, it's stone dead. I gotta go throw it on the charger here. Um, electric grease gun, that's another super handy thing. Another game changer, life-changing tool. Why grease like a peasant when you can grease like a king, right? Greasy boy! What the fuck? That's not mine, what? <laughs> this thing like pumps like crazy. Um, it works really good, actually. I straightened out uh, kink tracks before with it. So it does quite a bit, like it puts out quite a bit of pressure. And I got a big floodlight. Light's super important, that's why I got lights on the truck and I got this light. I got a bunch of flashlights. I got a bunch of these little magnetic sticky boys that can stick to things. So I always keep lots of lights on the truck because we tend to work a lot at night or early morning, you know, and I, when I got here, it was dark. So that's why all the lights are on. Early morning or late at night, it seems to be the two, the two things you do. That's why we work such long days, you know. <laughs> yeah, I got my power tools, my uh, three quarter inch impact in there and some other air tools which stay at the bottom because they really don't get used much. Uh, well, except for my air hammer, I use that quite a bit, but uh, yeah, punchy stuff, smashy things, and files, pry bars, that kind of thing. This drawer gets used a lot, you can kind of tell, everything rattles around. Sockets, yeah. I never actually use these, but whatever, they're in there. Like I said, I better have it. Better to have it and not need it, I guess. I don't know. What is that? Uh, it's like a, I don't know what they call it. When I was in aviation, we called these pancakes because they uh, look nothing like a pancake, but they operate nothing like a pancake too. So um, I don't know. I'd call it a, a reach around or something, but that's probably inappropriate. I don't know. Good old yeah. Willy Twister. I don't know. But it's impact rated and uh, I haven't used it yet, but I feel like there's gonna be a day, one day, I might need that. And I'm gonna be so happy that I wasted all that money on it a long time ago and whatever, but it's been sitting in the truck ever since and there'll be a day I use it and I'll be really happy I bought it. Like Sean said, like a tool that makes you money is a good tool. <laughs> I don't know, maybe those will make me money one day. I don't know, it's hard to say. But, uh, swivelly guys, uh, those are super handy. I went a long time without these actually. And I always just did the cheapy impact swivel and then all my sockets onto it and then you'll be using it and it flies off and your sockets in oblivion somewhere. And then I got smart and I bought these. And I use them all the time now. I actually use these more often than the regular sockets now just because I mean the thing is they'll still work straight onto something. And if I have to get in somewhere, I don't have to go back, grab my swivel or change anything out, right? So. Um, I just use pretty much impact sockets. I don't really keep a lot of chrome on the truck. I, I don't know, I never really found, a lot of guys have like a huge assortment of sockets. I don't, I guess. I don't know, you can see like I got some 12 points cause you need a 12 point once in a while. And then the quarter dry stuff's chrome. But all my three eighths, I just get all impact. My half inch is pretty much all impact except for a set of 12 points. I just find it's like I might as well just use an impact socket. You know, nine times out of 10, I'm using my impact or whatever. So why carry a whole extra set of chrome sockets and all that extra, you know, space and weight that it takes up when these do the job 99% of the time. Like that's a pretty thin wall on these, on these anyway. So I don't know. some guys complain about the thick wall on impact sockets. So I just buy nice impact sockets and I don't have that problem, I guess. I don't know. Man, I, I also spoil myself too with tools. So <laughs> yeah. Pinchy guys, grabby things, cutty things, squeezy stuff. I don't know a lot of technical names for tools. Sometimes I just have, uh, you know, I just call it what it is. I call it what it does. I don't know what it's called. I just know what it do, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. See, here's a problem too, being a field mechanic. You, when I was in the shop a long time ago in aviation, all my tools are so nice and clean and everything was shadowed nice and foam and all that. And you put stuff back and it stays clean. 
Now, like one day it, it pisses rain and you leave a drawer open by accident and now everything's just rusty and But I'm actually putting a uh, toolbox heater in here to kind of help with that too. So some guys put uh, heaters in their cabinets. I actually got a bunch of holes cut in here for it. It just pipes coolant from the engine up into a heater, kind of circulates through the body, keeps everything dry. A lot of the northern trucks have that kind of stuff already in them. Uh, it's not like it gets super cold here, so we don't really need it for the cold. It's more for the moisture. You know, moisture kills my tools. The tools always kind of stay oily anyways, because I don't really, I just wipe them. I don't break clean all my sockets, that kind of thing. I kind of keep a little film on them anyways. I mean, they're not really, you know, like my hands are just from handling tools this morning. You know, um, kind of keeps them from rusting anyway, so keeps them from turning all orange and brown. Uh, yeah, moving up. Uh, more wrenches, all my small wrenches, the ones that you use a lot, they all stay on this side of the truck. Uh, I got some random crow's feet in here too, because I don't have anywhere else to put them, and I just kind of leave them in a spot where they're not going to get in the way and rattle around. I know where they're at. Yeah, uh, again, I use all those little uh, springs, like the, the hose wrap for organizing your wrenches. That's super handy. Uh, these ones come with these nice organizers. I actually really like these organizers because they keep the wrenches all kind of compact and you know space is at a premium so what if you can save space and keep things organized that's uh that's huge but yeah more uh pokey stuff screwdrivers rad hose picks that kind of thing i keep a lot of picks i don't lose a lot of tools um i'm fairly organized i really don't lose a lot except for picks because picks you forget in your pocket <laughs> <laughs> and then you send your cubbies out and I feel like there's a, a toolbox at the coverall place that's just full of like 10 mil sockets and picks so it's a mystery we'll never solve it but um yeah anyway uh yeah so I got uh like three set four sets of picks here and all of them except for the long reach ones all have at least one or two missing <laughs> just because you I go through them a lot or you know you break one and I just sometimes I just drop it and I don't retrieve it or it's in the mud somewhere probably I don't know but picks picks I go through picks everyone goes through picks yeah screwdrivers scrapey stuff I don't know and then the top drawer is always a junk drawer I don't know I haven't met a mechanic that doesn't have like a junky top drawer because that just I don't know you put like pens and a billion rolls of electrical tape like just random stuff so it's really not that interesting actually but, uh, if you got any questions about any of the stuff in here they are crayons yeah do you want to know why like ac fittings aluminum you can do it on other stuff too i, I just found the only time it's ever worked for me was aluminum like uh, i don't know an aluminum fitting or something on like a compressor or whatever but you take your crayon and uh well, i'm short one because i melted it already and you heat up your fitting and then you just inject that now you just heat it up and then like push it onto the fitting and it wicks into the threads. It acts like a, a penetrant and a lubrication and it actually works really good because wax will get like really thin, get right in there and kind of like coats inside the threads or whatever, like a penetrant. And then when you're pulling it off, it doesn't mar the threads and gall. Like aluminum is really bad. Aluminum is stainless for uh, like galling and pulling threads. So uh, yeah, we got all our tricks for doing that kind of stuff and trying to get things apart. You know, you want to minimize damage. So crayons, you buy a cheap set of crayons and keep them on your truck. You might not ever use them. Uh, they might, the trick might not even work for you. It hasn't, it only worked for me a handful of times, but I keep them for that reason. You know, if it saves you messing up one fitting, I think it was worth the whatever buck fitty that a set of Crayola crayons cost you, right? Um, those are cheap tricks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm having fun with this, eh? Like, <laughs> I love my job, so. And I like sharing this kind of stuff, right? Uh, this is something we use in aviation a lot. It's uh, yeah, it's just like a waxy stick. So I use that sometimes for drilling. You just stick your drill bit in there and coats your drill bit. Um, there's nothing, nothing special about that. I use rapid tap a lot. I use this sometimes if it's like aluminum or something. Um, that's mostly what I use it for, just on aluminum. Um, yeah, um, knife blades, random stuff. Usually you end up having like a random piece of hardware you don't want to throw out because it's like, oh, I'm. I'm gonna keep that for whatever reason. I'm, I'll just throw that in my bin, you know. I keep a lot of these random little things. These are 
like terminating resistors. I don't know. They're all good terminating resistors. I kind of keep those. That's for like uh, CAN bus uh, systems. They use a terminating resistors on each end. So um, it's kind of a, I don't know. It's a diagnostic tool. It's a swapnostic tool. So I don't know if you've heard that term before. Um, swapnostics is like, I have this part. I know it's good. <laughs> I'm not sure if this part's bad, but let's swap them and see if the problem changes. It's the easiest diagnostic you can do. It saves so much time. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it because it, you know, if you can save that customer downtime because you didn't have to go in there and like mess around for hours on end. Well, hey, if there's two solenoids right beside each other, they're the exact same, and the problem's on first gear, and you got you know second or third gear there, swap it around and see if it changes to the third gear. Then you just found your problem in like two seconds instead of like two hours, right? I mean, swap gnostics. If you can carry like common parts like that, it's super handy, you know doesn't always work uh it's like anything like we were talking about troubleshooting the other day uh you know sometimes you spend days on something and sometimes you don't so i think that's pretty much it for this cabinet there's there's junk up top that kind of becomes a random collection area uh, i don't have any of my ac gear on board i actually just took it off the other day because um well ac season is kind of over <laughs> so uh, i do keep one set of gauges though like uh AC manifold gauges on the truck just just because I don't know I have two sets so I might as well keep one on the truck but I actually have a big pelican case that's got all my AC gear in it I keep that in the shop usually so I don't have too much stuff on the truck you know it's nice to carry everything but I mean AC here we only do it a few months of the year so I just keep that on a portable case I throw it on the truck when it's AC season to keep a bottle of refrigerant and you know when you get a call out then you can go to that most of the year you don't get those calls so most of the those tools stay in my shop i don't need to keep everything all the time um yeah there's usually random stuff there's usually garbage water bottles stuff underneath the cabinets that you kind of drop there and don't i actually thought i got all my water bottles out but i left one um yeah uh, big pry bar because i use this guy a lot like i said uh, uh efficiency i don't like walking around my truck a million times to grab every tool that i might need for that job so this bar i use so much i just keep it right here um, easy to grab. I don't know, it's right there. I know where it is every time. It's not really like, uh, it's kind of just wasted space anyway, so might as well put tools there. What's the story on the circular saw? The circular saw? Yeah. Oh, um, so I just, I cut wood with it. That's what it's for. Just blocking, you know, you want to cut some blocks down, you keep a saw on board. I actually keep a chainsaw on board usually. I don't have it on me right now. It's the same thing. I just hadn't been using it a lot and I just took it off for you know, space. Uh, but I usually keep a chainsaw on the back doghouse uh, for doing that. So I keep the small saw here just for whatever, because I don't want to fire up a chainsaw just to, you know, cut down a little two by four or whatever if I'm putting some blocking or cribbing up. Uh, but the chainsaw is nice because you keep a chainsaw on board, you can cut down some big cribbing, make your blocks and stuff for doing, you know, bigger jobs and whatnot, right? Yeah, I usually carry blocking. I actually got it at home uh, right now. There's usually a bunch of blocks in the back. I try to keep some just a couple. I don't like going overboard with that kind of stuff and keeping a billion things on board because it's easy to overload yourself. But I keep uh, a couple of like 10 by 10s, uh, just, you know, two chunks uh, and then a bunch of little four, uh, two by fours and stuff. And blocking something that like you go through that, it's a consumable. You just try to keep it from, you know, you split it, you get new stuff. I don't like using split blocks and stuff like that. And shield rot and stuff because you know, it's like the straps, it's stuff that uh, your life's kind of in that thing's hand. So you want to keep it nice and, you know, keep, keep your equipment in good shape. You know, take care of it, it takes care of you. Everything in the cabinets I think we've done. Is there any questions you got? <laughs> it turns out the truck video ended up way longer. So click here, click here, click here. You can even click here.